Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show with Nichols head baseball coach Seth Thibodeau. Presented by State Farm Insurance. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state with State Farm Insurance. Hello and welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. Coming up in today's program, we'll take you through the thick of the Southland Conference Tournament hunt. Also, the Colonels get pink for a great cause, and we go around Nichols Athletics on the Colonel Connection. We're joined here by the head coach of the Nichols baseball team, Seth Thibodeau. You got your rally goatee going on, huh? We, you know, we have a team rule. We don't, we don't usually do facial hair, but, you know, we're going, we're pulling all out all the stops this week. The Colonels are going to need... A minor miracle at, at Stephen F. Austin coming up this weekend. But, hey, you guys were in a similar situation last year. You needed to sweep McNeese. You needed some help from around the league, and you got it. You made your way into the tournament and made it all the way to championship Saturday, facing a, a very similar scenario here this weekend. Hey, we, we put ourselves in a good situation by taking two out of three last weekend, and, and uh, so we're excited about it. We want to get hot right now and get hot at the right time and get in that tournament. We'll talk more about the uh, conference tournament hunt in just a bit, but let's you get get you caught up here on where we're at right now. The Colonels entered last weekend's series against Northwestern State, sitting in 11th place, but just a game and a half out of a tournament berth. The Demons were in a three-way tie for seventh, along with Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Stephen F. Austin. While Northwestern State started the Southland season nine and three, they had been falling steadily ever since, and the Colonels were primed to take advantage. Friday night was the Colonels' annual pink game to benefit breast cancer research. Don't adjust your screens here. Nichols dressed in special pink jerseys for the occasion. Let's take you to Didier Field in Thibodeau for Friday night's series opener, which was delayed about a half hour due to wet weather. Seth Webster had a disastrous outing a week prior, but he was determined to turn the tables. He wasn't unhittable on Friday, but he scattered his hits and he got outs when he needed them. Got some help there from Cody Dufran throwing out Drew Helenihi, trying to steal second in the first inning. Lefty Mason Melitakis, arguably the number one pitching prospect in the Southland. He was on his game on Friday, but the Colonels made the most of their few hits against him. Bottom one, Phil Lyons on second after an error and a steal, and Jeremy Hill delivers the RBI single. Lyons comes around, 1-0 Nichols, the 23rd consecutive game in which Hill has reached base. Dufran coming through again in the second after consecutive hits to start the frame. Ray Frias can't lay down the bunt, and they pick off Nick Hinojos, a fine job by Cody. Frias winds up swinging away and with Jordan Buckley taking off on the pitch. Lions in perfect position for a backhanded play, starting up the twin killing, and the Colonels are out of the inning. Meanwhile, Melitakis was a strikeout machine. He fans two in the first, gets another pair in the second, including Dufran there. Melitakis fanned the side in order in the third. He had seven Ks early. Webster navigates around an error in the third, getting Colin Bear to chase a slider to finish the frame. The offense gives him some breathing room in the fourth, one out. Hill on second following a leadoff walk and wild pitch, and Michael LaGrange tees off over the palm tree and left his third home run of the year. Nichols is up three to nothing. LaGrange getting it done with the glove as well. Bear leading off the six, and LaGrange comes up with a sliding catch. Nichols turned another double play later in the inning, still three nothing. Melitakis unrelenting. He strikes out LaGrange to end the six. He retired the final nine he faced and finished with 14 strikeouts in seven innings of work, one shy of a program record. Webster runs into problems here in the eighth. The base is loaded with one away when Matt Baca hits a sharp grounder just under the glove of Austin Flores at third. Mitch Huckabee scores a first demon run, and the Colonel lead is down to two. That would do it for Webster. He yielded ten hits in seven in the third innings. Brad DeLott coming out of the bullpen here, trying to put out the fire. The first man he faces is pinch hitter Ryan Westbrook. Got him on the breaking ball. Two gone. But no such luck here against Nick Canojos. He drops a two-run hit inside the line in right. Will Watson and pinch runner Kevin Sanford both score. This ball game's tied at three. So into the ninth we go. And Jordan McCoy is on the hill here for Nichols. Helen Ehe on first with two gone when Watson slices one off the body of Florence. It winds up bouncing out of play, and that's huge. If it had stayed in play, Helen Ehe may have scored the go-ahead run. Instead, it's a ground rule double. Helen Ehe stuck at third. Colonels got out of the inning. Bottom nine, Joe Scanio pitching for Northwestern State. Hits Blake Bajeron on the hand to start the inning. LaGrange batting, and the Colonels take a chance, giving Bajeron the steal sign. He's in there, his 11th stolen base of the 
season. Back to LaGrange. Scanio gets a piece of the bouncer and slows it up for Frias, but there's no play to be made. Bajeron puts on the brakes at third. LaGrange with the infield hit. So now the infield is in, the outfield is shallow. Austin Flores with a chance to be the hero, and he comes through. The fly ball over Buckley's head and right, despite striking out 16 times and getting out hit 13 to six, the Colonels win it. Four to three, your final score in Friday night's opener. Coach, this was the first time Austin got to play in front of his parents as a Colonel. He, he, he brought it, he brought it. He absolutely did all over the place and he was phenomenal all night. And it's exciting for me to be able to see that, you know, recruiting the young man a couple of years ago, knowing he'd be a long ways from home, you know, in Fort Myers, Florida to here. And, and to hear them in the crowd right there cheering for him and for him to be able to come through in a big situation, it was, it was pleasing for all of us. It was an exciting night and he absolutely brought it, you're right. You got the opener, but uh, Saturday we got rained out, just too much rain and you had to play a double header on Sunday. I know you guys were raring to go Saturday. We absolutely were and we, we did everything we could to get that game in. We tried pushing it back. We tried everything we could to play on Saturday and we just couldn't do it. Uh, Didier had taken enough rain all day long, so we, there was no way we could have gotten it done, so we pushed over for a doubleheader on Sunday. Saturday's game washed away, so so much riding on Sunday when the Colonels and Demons would play a twin bill. Senior day for the Colonels, the final time that 11 seniors would put on a uniform on their home field. Blake Bajeron, Bo Falk, Brad DeLott, Jeremy Hill, Austin Flores, Michael LaGrange, Evan Weibel, Kevin Persick, Mike Wisecarver, there's Donnie White, Patrick Shreve, was loosening in the bullpen. It was also Mother's Day, and fortunately, coming up here, nobody was injured, as all the moms in attendance threw out a ceremonial first pitch. Just a great scene here before game number one of the series. Mother's Day is always a great day, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, that was a classic throw right there as well. <laughs> Just a great moment before this contest. We're scoreless here. Top two, Shreve induces Ryan Westbrook into the double play. That was part of a string of nine in a row retired by Shreve, another senior. Nichols facing lefty Colin Bear, bottom third. Two runners in scoring position, but Bear gets Jeremy Hill swinging at strike three. One of the rare times that Hill hasn't come up in a big spot. Still no score. Top six, Shreve walked the leadoff man, and he's on. For Will Watson, the fly out to left brings in Kevin Sanford, and Northwestern State is up 1-0. The Colonels come right back, home half of the six. Michael LaGrange with a one-out single before Austin Flores slices one off the body of Westbrook at third. The Demons have problems digging it out of the bullpen. LaGrange comes all the way around. Flores has raised his batting average 24 points over the last month. Top seven, the Demons load the bases, and with two outs, Donnie White is summoned in from the bullpen. But White falls behind pinch hitter Sean Hoover and walks him on five pitches. And then the unthinkable Cody Dufran misfires the ball back to the mound. It goes into center field. Everybody takes an extra base. Baca scored on the walk. Hinojos takes home on the error. And the Colonels are down 3-1. to one. After that, Brad DeLott retired all seven batters he faced. The Colonels with a chance in the eighth, two in scoring position, but reliever Carson Goldsmith gets David Horn, uh, Zorn rather, on the high heat. Another opportunity in the ninth. Goldsmith walks two and fans one before Blake Bajeron singles through the left side. Philip Lyon scores. Nichols is within one. But the Colonels put both Matt Richard and Blake Bajeron in motion here. Bajeron just got a bad jump, and he is thrown out at second. Now there are two away. That would haunt the Colonels. LaGrange coming up here with a soft grounder. Might otherwise have brought in a run. At least would have kept the game going. Instead, it's the end of the game. Northwestern State evens a series with a 3-2 victory. Coach, another one that was right there for the taking. Absolutely was. We, we definitely didn't get it done when it mattered the most. And that was a little disappointing because we had our opportunities. A little base running blunder there in the ninth really kind of haunted us a little bit. And I felt like we were, uh, you know, if that doesn't happen, I really feel like we had a chance to win that baseball game. Well, you got another chance about 30 minutes later. Game two of the doubleheader about as close to a must-win game as they come. The Colonels would be facing virtually an impossibility of qualifying for the postseason if they drop this one. The ball goes to Mike Sook, who was good enough to get the job done in his only prior Southland start coming two weeks ago against Texas State. Wasted no time on Sunday. Leadoff man Derek Heleny, he down on strikes to start the game. Sook retired seven of the first 80 faced. The Demons selected lefty Jamie Biddle for a spot start. Phillip Lyons with a leadoff hit and stolen base before Jeremy Hill strokes a hanging pitch into center. Here comes Lyons with the first run of the game. Hill ties the longest hitting streak of his career at 12 games. Northwestern State, though, takes the lead in the third. Two in scoring position for Watson. Austin Flores ranges over for the bouncer, but the low throw to first gets away from both Falk. 
race uh, free is scored on the hit. Helene, he crosses on the error. It's two to one Demons. But the Colonels reply here in the bottom of the third. Nichols loads the bases for Hill. Base hit to left. Zorn scores a tying run. Hill on his way to a season high four hits. He was named the Louisiana Sports Writers Association Offensive Player of the Week. That would do it for Jamie Biddle. On comes JP Clifton to face Blake Bajeron. The worm burner through the left side chases in Lions and Matt Richard. And the Colonels lead by two. And Bajeron was just getting started. Two batters later, ground ball here off the bat of Austin Flores, slips under shortstop Mitch Huckabay. Hill comes home, a four-run frame gives Nichols a 5-2 to two advantage. Same score, bottom five, and Flores does it again. This one out of the reach of Nick Canojos at third. It scores Hill. The Colonels are up by four. The offense registered 14 hits in this one. After a Watson RBI single in the top of the seventh, Bajoran back up and he tees off on lefty Andrew Adams to lead off the bottom of the frame. This one is long gone. The team leading seventh home run of the year for Bajoran. It's seven to three Colonels. Bajoran certainly made his final home game count. He wasn't finished yet. In the eighth, after Jeremy Hill doubles Bajoran facing Zach Winchester, he unloads, driving it to the deepest part of the park. It's off the wall. Hill scores easily. Bajoran with a standing triple. He falls a double shy of the cycle, three hits, Four batted in for Blake Bajeron. Jordan McCoy allows an unearned run in the ninth on Watson's third RBI hit of the game, but the Colin Bear ground out ends it. Nichols wins it 8-4. to four. They take the series from Northwestern State for the second straight year. Coach, you live to fight another day. We live to fight another day, and we played really good baseball right there in that second game. We swung the bats really well. Michael Silk pitched a, a heck of a game, and, and it was good to see us fight the way we did. The Colonels taking the series from Northwestern State, so you're still alive in the Southland Tournament hunt. What would you tell your team after that victory? After that victory, I wanted them to understand how I would appreciate you. know, After the first game, I didn't want them to let that the disappointment carry over in the game two of the doubleheader. And after I told him, I said, you know, I wanted him to know how proud I was and how, you know, how I, I felt. And I could see how hard they fought for that game. But they weren't going to be denied. I can tell that the entire time. And it was good to get that series victory. And, you know, that's five out of six. The last six games we played Northwestern. So it's another in-state opponent we've had a lot of success against. In their final midweek game of the season, the Colonels visited the fourth-ranked Tigers of LSU on Tuesday night. Both clubs had their respective conference races on their minds, but there was still something at stake. LSU going for their 40th win and a perfect season in midweek play. The Colonels were in search of their third win over a nationally ranked club this year. Let's take it Alec Box Stadium in Baton Rouge. Bo Falk facing Kurt McCune in the second. The blue pit here scores Bajeron, who had led off with a double. Nichols up a run, and the Colonels were certainly feeling good early on Tuesday night. Into the third, runners at the corners with one out. Bajeron at the plate, the sharp grounder to third. Tyler Hanover knocks it down, but Phillip Lyons crosses two to nothing in favor of Nichols. Senior Mike Wisecarver getting his second career start against LSU. He held his own there in Baton Rouge last year, and in this one, he kept the Tigers' potent offense off the board through two. But an error opens a door in the third. LSU takes advantage. First and third, no outs. Jackson stayed with this hot shot. Bajeron knocks it down, but the infield hit scores RB Fields, and the lead is cut in half. Next up, Mason Katz, and this two-bagger brings in Austin Nola from second. The relay coming up here from Phillip Lyons sails over the head of the catcher Cody Dufran. Stayed would score as well here. It's a five-run, five-hit inning for LSU. Two of those runs were unearned. Wise Carver goes five innings. Brad DeLott on to pitch the sixth, and he serves up Katz's 10th home run of the season. A three-run blast blew the game wide open. It's 8-2 to two LSU. DeLott did go on to retire seven of the next eight. Jordan McCoy facing Hanover here in the eighth. The base hit to left. Chases in Grand Dozar. It's 9-2, to and it looks like LSU is going to cruise to the victory here. But Nick Rumbelow allows a couple of Colonels to reach in the ninth, and with one out, Paul Maneri goes to his bullpen, bringing in lockdown closer Nick Goody. The Colonels, though, weren't about to give in. The rally is underway with his Phillip Lyons single to center. It bleeds on through. In comes pinch runner Ray Ureste. It's a 9-3 to contest now. Lyons with a three-hit night. After Matt Richard singles, Jeremy Hill coming up. He grounds to second. It looks like a game-ending double play, but Jacoby Jones boots it. Byron Cobb scores, as does Lions. The Colonels are within four. And then Bajeron comes up, and he would deliver yet again. The double. 
just out of the reach of right fielder Brent Bonvillan. It drives in Richard. Hill advances to third. We got ourselves a ball game. It's 9-6. to six. Bajeron with two doubles and two runs batted in. So the Colonel's right back in it, but Goody comes back and catches the corner on the 3-2 fastball to Michael LaGrange. That's out number two. It's up to Austin Flores again. He got it done Friday, but Goody fans him here. Ball game over. The Colonels put a scare in the Tigers, but LSU holds on for the 9-6 win. You had to be proud of your ball club the way they fought in this Absolutely. One. We had some really good at-bats at against some good arms, especially Goody there at the end. That guy's one of the best closers in the Southeastern Conference for a top-10 ranked team, and, and for some of our guys to get some good swings off him right there, it was really good to see. But, you know, we played our tails off. What we did was we made a couple of errors and walked a couple of guys, and that's really unlike us. That's not our team, and we put ourselves in some bad situations and didn't win the freebie war. Can't uh, can't make mistakes against a team like no, that. No, absolutely not. When you do, that's what they strive on. And you know, we've made one too many. And every time we did it, they capitalized. They scored. They had two big innings on us, and it all started with you know an error here and a walk there. And next thing you know, it's a it's a big hit. So you can't do that against a really good club. We're going to talk more about the conference race here in a little bit. On deck on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance. Ashley Bull has more on the Colonel's special work with Thibodeau Regional Medical Center to help find a cure for breast cancer. Plus, several Nichols student athletes are showcasing their talents on the airwaves. We're back in 60 seconds. There goes Dwayne's car. There goes Dwayne's house. And there goes Dwayne. Man, that thing does not like Dwayne. State Farm's got you covered. In Lockport, call Ashley Barrios. And in Homa, call Travis Gravois. Get to a better state. baseball team continues to fight their way into the conference tournament, but not before taking time from their busy schedule to show support for those who are facing a threatening opponent of their own. Last week, the Colonels stopped by the Cancer Center of Thibodeau Regional Medical Center to visit with patients in conjunction with the Colonels' annual Bat Against Breast Cancer Game, also known as the Pink Game, to benefit the Bayou Region affiliate of Susan G. Komen for the cure. Thibodeau Regional Medical Center CEO Greg Stock is thankful for the Colonel's continued support over the years and for the awareness it has raised. It means a lot to us, you know. It's, uh, I think Coach Thibodeau went out of his way to, to do this. He got his players involved. That kind of automatically involves their families. For the hospital, we had a hospital night here where we invite our staff to come. And we have a tailgate kind of and eat food and drinks. And, you know, we had one of our doctors uh, throw the first pitch out, Dr. Schweitzer, one of the medical oncologists, and another of the radiation oncologist was speaking to the, speaking to the audience here, and you know, th those are little things, but little things are big things, and so somebody may have heard something here tonight, even if it was one person, one person that had a greater awareness, we might have, we might have saved somebody's life, really, literally. Following their inspiring visit, the Colonels took on Northwestern State in the pink game on Friday. Employees of Thibodeau Regional were in attendance as the club battled to defeat the Demons. A silent auction was set up for fans to bid on a player's pink jersey and receive it at the end of the game. The club raised several thousand dollars to help fund screening and treatment grants for patients. As the team and the hospital continue to raise awareness, oncologist Dr. Laura Campbell appreciates the hard work the program has done to help with cancer research. Well, it's great to have community organizations and certainly one as big and inspiring as an educational institution like Nichols. Part of cancer awareness is education and communities pulling together, and Nichols has always been very positive in their staff and their students participating in such things. The partnership between Thibodeau Regional and Colonel Baseball gives the Cancer Center the opportunity to help community members take precautionary measures to detect cancer early. 
Stock describes this as getting upstream from the problem itself. Their partnership continues to function as distance is not an issue for these two teams. We work with Nichols on a lot of different things. You know, Nichols is our neighbor physically here. We're the hospitals next door, Thibodeau Regional. And all across their sports program, their uh, business school, their nursing school, the many different schools of, of disciplines here at Nichols. And generally, just in a general sense, uh, we've had a great partnership for years. Coach Thibodeau sees the moment as a way to expose his players to something other than the game. Uh, you know, it just what a really neat experience for, for everyone involved on our, on our, in our program and uh, doing it for a great cause. You know, the best part about it is we're raising money for a, just a wonderful organization. We're proud to be able to merge with Thibodeau Regional. Uh, and those guys are very supportive as, uh, of us as well, and I feel like it's important for our guys to give back like that. But the, the neatest part about it was for our players to be able to, uh, you know, go to the cancer center and just really touch some, some lives there. You know, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a very a neat moment to see my guys counteracting uh, or, you know, talking and, and communicating and, and lifting spirits in the cancer center. And we got to do that for well over an hour this week, and it was just... Uh, it was very neat and, and it's something our players will never forget and I'm so proud of the way they handled themselves at that time and you don't get to do that and it's important for us to, to teach these guys to, to give back and, and communicate with people that are less fortunate and I, and I was very proud of the way our guys handled themselves in that situation. As the Colonels make a difference in their community alongside Thibodeau Regional Medical Center, their continued battle against breast cancer hits home for those women who have defeated it and those who are still fighting. Their spirit conversely serves as an inspiration to the Colonels. For the Seth Thibodeau Show, I'm Ashley Bull. Thank you very much, Ashley. Coach, you know, you, you've instilled it in your guys. They understand, they get it, the kind of impact they can have on the community and vice versa. Absolutely. It's important for us to, to be able to get out and give back to what, we, you know, we get so much. And I want my guys to understand that it's important to give and not always to receive. Uh, but then for them to experience something like this and maybe make put a smile on someone's face or, or bring hope to someone that, that's not doing as well as, as we are. So it, it's an exciting time for our guys. We're going to talk about the conference tournament race here in just a moment. Right now, though, Philip Boudreau takes us around Nichols Athletics on the Colonel Connection. Two Nichols football players take their talents to the airwaves and a former Colonel basketball star steps off the court and into the studio. That and more is all coming up on this week's Colonel Connection. With the opportunity that the Nichols radio station, KNSU, presented, center Gerald Grunick and quarterback Bo Abair dove into their first stint with radio. The duo hosted a sports talk show named The CQ Exchange. The hour-long program aired three times weekly during the spring semester. Abair gained valuable experience with his first foray into radio. He also contemplates following in the footsteps of his father, former Saints quarterback Bobby Abair. It's just, it's just real fun, and you know, I've learned a lot actually, you know, putting playlists in certain spots, and my dad does radio in New Orleans, and so it's, it's maybe something I want to do later, so I, I, it's something that I just kind of wanted to get my feet wet, and I would say everything about it has been real fun, and some of the interviews we've done have been great. We interviewed uh, two of our coaches, we've interviewed a UFC fighter that is in Thibodeau, we've interviewed uh, Greg Greeley, he was one of the best defensive backs in Nickel State history. Although the two feel that their first stint in radio was successful, Grunig recognizes that they haven't reached their ceiling. I think the CQ Exchange right now, Bo and I have something good going where I kind of set things up and Bo gets to take them and run with it. We'd like to go for the ESPN Mike and Mike, you know, kind of just laid back sports, which is fine. But we're going to try and set it up with someone else where we can have a sports show every day where at the same time so that way you're not tuning in every other day I mean, at first i was like man another sports show that's but espn has 12 sports shows a day i want the cq exchange to set the bar and be the standard for the sports programming here at KNSU. the colonel athletic association hosted the nichols athletics fred roth memorial golf tournament last week the event was held at the atchafalaya at odd wild golf course in patterson louisiana the contest pitted four-man teams against one another through 18 holes. All the proceeds from the event benefited the athletics department. The tournament brought in over $22,000. After four years of collegiate basketball, former Colonel Summer Leslie stepped off the court to develop her passion for singing. She transformed into the burgeoning artist known as Summer Rain. Leslie combines a multitude of genres such as jazz, pop, R&B, gospel, and hip-hop to give her audience a unique sound. 
As an aspiring musician, Leslie is on a mission to hearten her listeners. I'm really doing music so it can change people's lives. I'm not really doing this for any money. I do this because it's a passion, something that I love. I just want people to, you know, feel my music. You know, I want it, I want it to be heartfelt and I want it to change people's lives for the better. To get more information, go to summerrain.com, which features her biography, contact information, and her latest music releases. And send into lovers. For the Set Thibodeau Show, I'm Philip Boudreaux with your Colonel Connection. Boy, we got some talented student athletes around here, Coach. Thank you very much, Philip. It's down to the final weekend of the regular season here. The Colonel's heading to Stephen F. Austin to take on the Lumberjacks in a three game set. You need to win the series to qualify for the conference tournament. If you get two, you're going to need a whole lot of help from the rest of the league. If you go in there and sweep, well, everything should take care of itself. It's not a guarantee, but it's likely to happen. You haven't swept a series yet this year. What better time than now? <laughs> Now's the right time to do it. We just need to go in, and the most important thing is, is winning each inning on, on Thursday afternoon at the first game of the series. And when we do that, then we'll move on to game two. But, you know, you can't get any of them without getting the first one, and we certainly want to be our best on Thursday. The Lumberjacks are in the midst of a conference race as well. This is just, this lining up just like last year did with, with these. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost a carbon copy. You almost want to, you know, you don't want to put yourself in this situation at the end of the year, but we continue to do it <laughs> for the third year year in a row but our guys have played so hard through so much adversity you know we had five guys on IVs at some point throughout the last weekend and we had you know we've had four or five six guys out with injury all year and we continue to play our tails off and we continue to compete and put ourselves in situations you know at the end to compete for something big the Colonel's taking on the Lumberjacks today tomorrow and Saturday how do you think you match up against them I feel really good about it I feel like they can be pitched to and, and I want to see Seth and Pat give us two really good outings that'd be good to see um, and I feel like you know if we can scratch and claw here and there and we ought to be able to you know score some runs but the, the biggest key is to make sure that uh, we take care of the baseball and and pitch it really well and I feel like we'll have a chance to swing it so you know let's just go let's go win game one and, and with Seth Webster on the bump something I love about this team Sunday night when we started looking at these scenarios and figuring it's probably going to take a sweep to get there. The coaches and the players just kind of looked and said, oh, okay, no big deal. No big deal. We've been there before. <laughs> That's why we, we were really hoping to get back to this tournament because we've been there before. And we've had to go through so much, and, and, and we continue. Like I said, nothing really big really phases this club. They're not a panic-type team. And, and, of course, we've got to get something really big done in the last weekend, and no big deal. These guys, they feel really good about it, and they're confident, and they want to fight for it. So I'm excited for them. Coach, best of luck to you. Thanks, Wags. Hope that hair works for you. Absolutely. We'll see, what, we'll see how it works. Head coach Seth Thibodeau, hopefully we're talking to you in a couple of weeks after the conference tournament that the Colonels hopefully will qualify coming up here this week. And that's going to do it for our show. For Ashley Bull, Philip Boudreau, and Coach Tib, I'm Mike Wagenheim. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care. The Seth Thibodeau Show has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state with State Farm Insurance. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.